Hello, I'm uh, Paul Beckwith. I'm a uh, climate scientist um, at the University of Ottawa. And uh, today I want to talk a little bit about uh, how messed up the uh, climate system is and about some surprisingly high uh, rates of, ch of increase of methane uh, in the Arctic. So I'm going to do that um, by showing you uh, some uh, software here. Okay, so <clears throat> basically uh, what you see here um, is a colleague of mine in AMAG, the Arctic Methane Emergency Group, um, just emailed this uh, uh, about half hour ago to me. Um, and I want to talk about it because it's showing some very surprising things. So it's the Arctic methane levels, uh, May 30th, um, 2015 at four different regions um, in the Arctic. So uh, here, um, up in the Canadian archipelago in Nunavut, um, at, Alert, Nuna, Alert, at a weather station called Alert in Nunavut, um, this, these graphs, this, this plot is from 2000 to 20, um, to basically to present day. Um, and uh, what you can see here is you can see the methane trend increasing now. In the pre-industrial situation, the methane level was about 700 parts per million in the Arctic, as measured in Greenland ice cores. Um, of course, we're much higher than that now. Global average is approaching uh, 1900, but in the Arctic, um, it's higher. And what we're seeing here is a trend here. You know, we're getting a sharp slope upwards from, you know, in the last several years, uh, 2013, 2014. Um, so this is at, Nun in the, at Nunavut. Now, the Greenland curve isn't showing that sharp increase, but this curve only goes to 2014. So it's missing, um, it's, it's missing the uptick. Um, it's, so it's, there's no uptick here. So uh, if you look at the other two plots, so this is Svalbard, Norway, and this is Cold Bay, Alaska you can see again in the last, and these go to late, late to present day. This one only goes to a few years ago. Um, but you can see in the last couple of years, you can see the strong, uh, this slope, if you measure the slope of this rise, you know, it's getting it's steeper in those three locations. Um, also here, and that's just in the last few years. Like I said, this graph doesn't extend out far enough to cover those last two years. Um, now, the uh, mainstream view is that it's mostly uh, wetland emissions, um, but um, in the Arctic, that's normally um, at lower latitudes. Also, you know, if you get melting permafrost and, and um, lakes forming and mar new marshes and things, you can get emission lots of emissions from those regions. Um, but um, you know, looking here, uh, we're probably looking at methane coming up possibly from the uh, ocean floor um, or from the, uh, you know, the the permafrost on terrestrial permafrost. But I guess the key here is that we seem to be getting a sharp rise in the last few years in methane from these regions. So I guess the big question I have is, is this causing localized regional warming in the Arctic, which would then uh, be a mechanism to create a ridge, which would then cause further distortion of the jet streams. The jet streams are slowing down and getting wavier because of Arctic temperature amplification, reducing the uh, temperature gradient between the Arctic and the equator, slowing the jet streams, making them wavier. The location of these of the waves, the higher amplitude waves, ridges and troughs, is dependent a lot on land ocean contrast. But also, if there's artificial ridges created, say from high methane and outgassing in a particular region, that could cause a ridge, and that could cause massive distortion of the jet stream. Um, so that's the question. Now, methane's heating effect is 86 times more than CO2, but that's over 20 years. That number is 34 times over 100 years, which is the number that's always quoted, or 20 to 25 is quoted, which is totally incorrect. Um, on a few year time scale, this number is at least 150 times. So just keep that in mind. And now let's have a look at what's happening 
um, with the um, uh, with the temperatures both in the ocean and in the atmosphere. So these are temperature anomalies based on a baseline of 79 to 2000. So what we're seeing is um, we're seeing air, there's a lot of structure. There's a lot of regions that are, so this region here is 10 to 15, up to 20 degrees Celsius warmer than normal. This region here is 10 degrees colder than normal for this given day, May 30th. Um, if you look at the overall um, temperatures relative to this baseline, the anomalies for the planet, you know, especially the northern hemisphere, are extremely high. So when we talk about, when I talk about abrupt climate change happening in the space of a decade or two, five to six degree global average rise, um, that's not so, f um, so far, uh, you know, out there. Um, it's not so far-fetched. I mean, we're seeing day-to-day -day, um, anomalies extremely high. Um, and this, um, if I just show you some other regions, if you look in, um, if you look in um, Asia, okay, um, there's ex extremely high temperature anomalies um, that seem to be persistent in some regions. And uh, this is another view of it. It's interesting that even though they have, they're having a massive heat wave in India, the anomaly is much, much, it's not enormous. I mean, it's a lot larger other places where the population density is, is lower. So, you know, we're hearing about the, the anomalies here killing 2, 000, over 2,000 people in India. Imagine if this anomaly here was down here, we'd be having orders of magnitude more more deaths from uh, from heat problems. Um, and uh, so this is just some other views. So look at look at An Antarctica. I mean, there's areas that are 20 degree warmer than normal, you know, 10 to 15 warmer than normal Celsius, and then areas that are 15 to 20 degrees cooler than normal. And spatially, there's not much difference between them. So this causes a very large temperature difference, very large pressure difference. So you'll have very high winds coming through here. So the jet streams, of course, when they come through, they meander and cycle all around and go through those regions. Um, so what's going on with the, uh, this is sea surface temperature, but the sea surface temperature anomaly is what is most remarkable. Extremely warm temperatures, four degrees warmer. And this is ocean water temperature, which is a lot, takes a lot more energy to warm that water up and and uh, a region of a warm region here and look at the pacific you know massive regions of warm water also some down here in the indian ocean there there's a lot of structure and it's the amount it's a structure and then and that is that is very unusual um that is um but the the, the pacific is is absolutely insane um, worldwide, about half a degree warmer than normal over the baseline. This is water temperature now. Um, sea surface temperature anomaly, northern hemisphere, much, much warmer than, than normal. North Atlantic, North Pacific, look at the North Pacific. Almost a degree warmer than normal over the entire North Pacific. And you can see the structure here. You know, this is two to three degrees warmer. This is four degrees warmer than normal. This, this is a normal El Nino pattern. So get rid of all of this other red here. Um, and this is what we'd expect with the El Nino. The trade winds weaken, the warm water that's collected on the Western Pacific um, sloshes over in a Kelvin wave off to uh, South America, creates wrecks of fishing and anchovy industry here. And, uh, you know, normally peaks around Christmas. So, you know, here we are, uh, end of May, very strong El Nino, but you know, look at what's going on here. I mean, this has been persistent for a long time, but this is strengthening here. Um, and it's almost like, uh, you know, call it a tri-nino or call it, you know, it's like the, it's like the El Nino here, you know, I'm not saying that this is caused by the El Nino, but this pattern here is extremely concerning and unusual. And it's gonna be the reason why 2015 sets huge temperature records globally. Um, in the atmosphere, because all this heat is coming out of the oceans. Of course, this is associated with the persistent, you know, four-year-plus um, California drought. Um, this this is uh, affecting the. Um, if you carry it across to, you know, Brazil, uh, it's affecting the uh, massive drought in places like Sao Paulo. 
Um, so, um, and what's happening with the uh, jet streams? Um, the jet streams are extremely wavy. You can see the dip here causing the cold part over North America, but there's a huge, there's a complete breakdown of the, um, of the jet stream, the normal jet stream system. There's nothing normal about these patterns. And, uh, you know, if we go here to look at the uh, sea ice, you can see that the, um, the sea ice is tracking below the two standard deviation levels. Um, the you know for this time of year um, and if you want to look at some of the patterns um, this is a yearly uh, cycle through uh, sea ice thickness so the the black is five meters or so the reds are four to five meters and then the the, the greens here and so on so um, you can see this is a date here so this is um, this is the um, this is March um, th this is a, the month 03 to April, the date and the time. Um, so look at these numbers here. So this we're into May of uh, this year, and this is how. So we're getting lots of export here, and this is 2014, a year ago. So it shows you how it's cycling. So now compared to last year, the, the ice is a lot thicker. The, the ridged ice. There's almost no multi-year ice. And uh, we, the loss that we see very much depends on the air temperature, the water temperature, the export through the basin and so on. So uh, we could have a record um, year. But the, uh, one of the key things is to try to tie the uh, locations of the jet streams and the locations of these, high, of these ridges um, to the methane. So remember um, the the station. Um, we go to temperature anomaly. So this is the um, the Cold Bay, Alaska t station where the methane is rising rapidly. There's another station on Greenland. There's a station on Svalbard, and then there's a station up in the Canadian Archipelago. So all these regions are measuring higher and higher methane levels. And uh, it, it's interesting to try to tie some of the troughs that we see in the jet streams to um, high methane levels. So those, those, uh, this is all cutting edge research and we're in for an extremely wild uh, ride. So uh, I'll just go back to uh, the methane plots. So in summary, you know, what's happening in the last couple of years with methane, the trends are our, uh, the emissions in the Arctic are uh, spiking up uh, rapidly. So I'll, I think I'll stop there and thanks for your attention.